as we discussed before, there is increasing complexity in terms of deciding the treatment for patients with relapsed myeloma. It's a good problem and a bad problem. It's a good problem because we have a lot of different drugs and drug classes and combinations that have been studied uh, in phase two and phase three clinical trials. The, the bad problem is now we have to decide amongst those different choices for a given patient and sometimes it can, can be difficult. For most part, I think we should be driven by data from phase three clinical trials, um, but clearly there can, in the clinic, there are situations where a particular patient may not fit the profile of the patients who went on a clinical trial. So we really have to depend on the aggregate data that's available there from phase three and phase two trials. One thing that has become clear over the past few years when you look at all the phase three clinical um, trials is that patients with relapsed disease who get a triplet appear to do much better than patients who get a doublet in terms of progression-free survival, which obviously is to be expected. But more importantly, some of these phase three trials are now showing overall survival benefit uh, for using a triplet compared to a doublet uh, in the setting of relapsed disease. So just like what we have um, done in the newly diagnosed setting, patients, in, especially the patients in the early relapses, should be considered for treatment with a triplet this is also supported by some of the biological studies that suggest that there's clonal evolution that happens uh, under the selection uh, pressure from therapy. So I think it's important to try and combine two different classes of drugs uh, to get the optimal outcome for patients with relapsed disease. Now, what are the different classes of drugs that we can combine? Obviously, the proteasome inhibitor and the immunomodulatory drug combination has been the one that has been studied the most. So we have the botasmib lenalidomide combination, exazimib lenalidomide, we have this, also the same combinations with pomalidomide. Uh, Carfilzomib is another proteasome inhibitor that has been combined both with lenalidomide and, and pomalidomide. And we know that the, the regimen of carfilzomib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone is quite effective, both in newly diagnosed setting and the relapse setting. And similar data has also been shown with the pomalidomide combination. Now we also have the whole new class of um, monoclonal antibodies and we have seen the uh, exciting data with both daratumumab and elotizumab uh, when it's combined with uh, an immunomodulatory drug or combined with a proteasome inhibitor. So I look at it as three major classes of drugs, the monoclonal antibodies, the proteasome inhibitors, and the immunomodulatory drugs. And at least two of those three classes should be included uh, in the combinations that we are uh, thinking about for any given uh, patient with relapsed disease. Now obviously, what, which particular regimen that we use for a given patient will depend a lot on what drugs they have seen before and what kind of toxicities they have seen before. So if somebody has had significant problems with the peripheral neuropathy with their initial treatment, we want to use a combination that has the least likelihood of, using, of causing peripheral neuropathy. If somebody had significant rash with uh, immunomodulatory drugs in the past, we want to think about combinations that may not cause that. And so taking into account the, the patient characteristics, we can narrow our choice of uh, the triplet down. Yeah, what are the preferred regimen for previously uh, treated uh, patients? Um, this is a simple question, but the answer is very complex because the situation is so complex and the clinical data which are available um, are insufficient because they don't compare all options against each other. So we have to make our choices based on, uh, on previous treatment, the response to previous treatment, tolerance to previous treatment, time to next treatment, or time to relapse. Um, uh, to, uh, and then um, patient situation, frail or fit, um, and of course patient's preferences and what is available in your center which is allowed by your healthcare system or insurance system. So that makes it really complex. There will be no global uniform recommendation for second, third and fourth line treatment possible because of this complexity. But what you can do, and what you are usually doing in your clinical practice, you use your clinical wisdom, and you look at what has the patient had before, uh, and what would uh, help him best. And then if the patient was on an EMIT, you would like to use a proteasome inhibitor, you have three choices. If the patient is um, 
um, willing to come to the institution quite frequently. He will receive a potassium or carfitzomib if the patient prefers to stay at home to, uh, to, or to continue with his work, uh, to be uh, uh, active, uh, then he would prefer an oral uh, proteasome inhibitor. Then uh, ixaxomib would be the choice, of course. And uh, if the patient has high risk feature, then again, a proteasome inhibitor, ixaxomib, carfitzomib, dex, or uh, potassomib uh, would be an option. If the patient is uh, frail, uh, exaxomib uh, combinations, exaxomib and X would be an option. Uh, and of course we have these antibodies now and uh, they should be and will be combined um, with uh, individual backbones in the future. Uh, I foresee, and I think uh, everybody working in this field foresee that we will have, we will follow the uh, lymphoma paradigm. We will have uh, a backbone plus an antibody in the induction. And then when it comes to uh, relapse refractory patients, we will have a backbone plus an antibody and uh, possibly plus two antibodies. So the field is evolving and what is uh, optimal today will be different, uh, will be overcome, uh, I think, tomorrow because there's so new thing, so much going on, such an, uh, let's say, active, uh, such an evolution of new treatments and also better understanding of the disease. When uh, we have uh, in front of us uh, relapse and refractory myeloma patients, I think that uh, there is not uh, any preferred regime over the other regimes. And uh, what we have to do is to consider the type of relapse if uh, the relapse is a biochemical or a very aggressive relapse, we have to consider the prior lines of therapy, the efficacy, as well as uh, the cumulative toxicity, and of course uh, the options of therapy we have uh, to treat to our patient in relapse. And now we know that uh, for patient relapsing after one to three prior lines of therapy, we are going to be able to choose among different combinations. We have to consider the features of the disease, the patient's preferences, the baseline characteristics of the disease, to try to individualize the choice and to make the optimal choice for the patient. The election of the the, the election of the optimal regime at the moment of relapse is going to be influenced by the prior line of therapy. The first scenario would be for patients receiving proteasome inhibitor based combination in the first line of therapy without previous exposition to lenalidomide. In this situation, at the moment of first relapse, the best option would be a lenalidomide hexamethasone based combination. And uh, we can choose between carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, ixazomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, daratumumab, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, or ilotuzumab, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone. How to choose one or other? Considering the patient's characteristics the baseline characteristics of the disease, the patient's preferences, and we can choose one or other. By contrast, if the patient is coming from lenalidomide as continuous therapy or lenalidomide as maintenance after transplant, at the moment of relapse, what we are not going to do is to repeat again lenalidomide and dexamethasone plus something else. And in this situation, we probably would choose a proteasome inhibitor based combination like carfilzomib plus dexamethasone, or probably in the near future we will use bortezomib dexamethasone plus daratumumab.